Welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, I have some good news and some bad news in this episode. Um, we are headed out to uh, the uh, Northern Forest Outpost, that would be uh, Fabrik Peps, where I uh, have completed the um, electromagnetic control rods. But on the journey out there, I am going to tell you the uh, the sad news, or bad news, depending on how you look at it. This will be the final episode of this specific factory, at least for now. I might revisit it later on. Now, the reason for that is not a simple reason. I'm kind of... Um, I don't know what you'd say. Uh, wistful, perhaps, would be the right word. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's it's a bit sad because I've spent 530 hours on this save, as you can see here, 131 actually, and uh, I've built a lot. But. There will, of course, be many questions in regards to why I'm ending the series. Well, the answer to that is simple. I am restarting. So, there will be more satisfactory content. So, there's no need to worry about, oh no, there's not going to be satisfactory on Caledon's channel. There is. One of the things that I have received the most comments about I, like, I have made um, the specific tutorial series that I made, the uh, beginner to Mega Base, the transition to Mega Base, that I did back in update 3.6, I believe. And one of the biggest, one of the most common feedbacks that I got was, it's difficult to understand what you have been doing because you are posting like you end an episode and then you start a new episode and then poof there's like all these new machines all these new things happening and i can understand that uh, from a, a new player perspective that, that that is actually quite difficult to understand even though i do my very best at explaining it it isn't the same. It isn't the same to hear me explain something as it is to actually see me build it. So basically what I decided was, let's just start fresh. And I want to start fresh over in the uh, rocky desert. Uh, I'll get back to that actually. Uh, and I already have started fresh on Twitch. That's the other thing. I'm going to be primarily doing this on Twitch, uh, and that is because it doesn't make sense to record four to six hour long episodes for uh, for YouTube um, when I can stream them and then upload that to YouTube afterwards. I will still do the uh, these types of episodes every now and then where I will uh, make kind of a verbatim episode of uh, hey guys this is the progress i've made since the last time because i also know that there are many people in the audience who prefer that style and that's uh, not a problem for me i enjoy making these uh, shorter versions just telling you guys what i've been doing since the last time so uh, so that's fun but this time that will be the companion series and the uh, the stream uh, uploads that I will be making after I've streamed stuff on Twitch will actually be the main series. Now, as you can see, I've set up everything that I needed here. I'm getting the high-speed connectors coming from the train station and I'm sending the uh, ECRs back up to the train station. They are on separate platforms as I intended them to be, so they're, they're going underneath here and, and coming up there. Um, now, let's just head back to the, uh, to the main base where I have, uh, 
several things that I want to uh, show you guys uh, and also uh, give some uh, explanations for what my reasoning has been. One of the reasonings I can already show you here, the glass foundations are... I wish there was a way that I could make the glass foundations be transparent regardless of the of the draw distance. There might be a way through the console commands, um, but obviously the, the reason for why uh, Coffee Stain Studios has made them be drawn opaque uh, when you look at them from a distance is for um, for um, performance reasons. Thank you, thank you, Brain. Thank you, and I can see why that is necessary as well probably wouldn't be a major thing on, on my very, very spoiled computer, uh, but uh, so that is why I wish I could remove it and have them be transparent regardless of the draw distance, but and th 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 there is no option for it uh, that I have found, so uh, that's just something that I would have, I I'll have to live with. Um, now, the factory that I've built here, uh, it's been a, an interesting um, journey, to say the least. I've, uh, I've learned a lot from this factory myself, as well as what I've tried to teach you guys through what I've been showing both in my main series, which would be this up until now, and also in the uh, the stream companion series. A couple of those things we are going to get into as soon as we get over to the base. But the the, the main reason uh, is that I have realized that for my specific building style. Oh, am I going the wrong way? Well, the train is going the wrong way. I don't know. Yeah, it came on the same time as that one, so the switch was uh, was set to uh, to go. So it's just following that switch. That that can happen, by. Um, now where was I? Um, yeah. So usually, what I've done in this factory is that I I set up long lines, production lines, where I. Do the calculation for what the belt throughput is, and uh, in endgame that means that I am aiming for 780 of any product that is not uh, one of the high tier products. Like it wouldn't make sense. It actually wouldn't even be possible to set up a full belt of 780 turbo motors or 780 supercomputers. There's simply not resources in the game for that. So that's just something that is how it is. Um, but in that process, there's a lot of belts. There is a lot of belts. Like there is a massively m amount of belts. Most of them are going towards the mall or to other parts of the factory. But what I've done down here, I'm quite proud of this. It it looks really amazing, uh, like uh, really cool to look at this. But one of the mistakes that I made was that I should have done it differently. Like I've had the belts with this distance to one another. And if you are ever going to do something like this, don't do that. You're doing yourself a disservice. At least make them this distance. So, so that you have that much space between the belts. At least make it that distance. It might even be smarter to make them even further out in distance, but it, it kind of depends on what you are aiming for, because there is also the question of whether you want to use these. Now, let me just put two of these down as an example of what I mean. Now, if you want to use the three pole windows, you have to put the belts on this distance. 
because that's how they attach up. And that can cause you some problems, just so you're aware. Now, if you use the other wall conveyors, uh, you have a lot more space between. If I put another one here, you can see that the spacing between the belts will be similar. And I would recommend using this distance between your belts. Not sure if it's similar, actually. Might not be. I can put one of those there. It is similar. So this is exactly one... Uh, why am I not getting power here? It's exactly one belt uh, width in between. So this would be uh, a much better approach to building such uh, an underworld facility as I've done here. So I would strongly recommend doing that if you want to uh, go with this kind of building style where you have the the bus going underneath the base. But then you also run into things like this um, in my design here. And this is a large part of the reason why I am not very happy with this. Like this looks absolutely messy. And while I have a to tolerance for that, I mean, this isn't a problem. Uh, I, I wish I could have had this belt one further up. But if I were to have this belt one further up, as you can see here, this belt would clip into that. So I would have to take it a little bit further out, then take it across and then take it in again and then move it down the line. So I would I had to use inclinations here. That would also have eliminated the inclination over here. I mean, these are very minor things. It's not a it's not a problem. Then you also have things like this. Uh, this one is fine, I guess. But when you deal with the ones that are coming from underneath, like the ones here coming from underneath with uh, steel smelting. So these are steel ingots going up. I think they are back to back. Indeed, they are. I this has annoyed me. Uh, because it comes up at an awkward position of the base. Uh, I could fix it. I mean, there, I could fix this entire base. But it would take me so much time to fix this that I figured that I might just as well start fresh. Because starting fresh gives me the opportunity to, to do exactly that. Here's another one of these that annoys me. I can't even put up a fence here because of the belts. Well, I can, but then the belts will clip through the fence, and that also doesn't look. Um, it will give me the opportunity to actually do what people have asked. That is, show what I do step by step. And there's a fair amount of people I've understood that likes to just have satisfactory long episodes on in the background while they're playing the game themselves. And I'm honored that people would actually use my videos like that and just sit there and have them on and draw inspiration from from what I'm doing. That's something that I find uh, very, uh, very flattering. And uh, yes, I actually do feel honored. I think that's the correct. One. But this mess here as well, I wish I could have done this differently. The reason why this mess is the way it is, is because that I'm producing everything in centralized locations and I have to take it out to the production lines. And that is what is really annoying me with this build design. There's not, nothing wrong with it, but there is so many other ways that I can do this that would make my life simpler. So the plan for the new base is to instead of having like, for instance, take these crystal oscillators, they take quartz crystal, they take rubber and they take AI limiters. So instead of having these, like make the AI limiters in a, again, using the belt speed as a, as a gauge, then take it down and bring it over here and up and the same with the rubber, produce the rubber out the fine, at the refinery. The oil products I might do that with, depending on, because refineries take up so much space. But the gist of it is, instead of doing it like this, the quartz crystal, that's a raw material. Or rather, it's not completely raw material, but that's a basic 
basic um, production material. You produce it in... Uh, actually, you don't produce that in a smelter, but you produce it in a, in a constructor. So I might do that uh, the same way, but I don't think so. Anyhow, the, the point is, if I want to set up six manufacturers making insulated crystal oscillators, why not just have the AI limiters being made behind them? Why not just have the rubber being made behind them? And then why not just having the quartz crystal being made behind them? Or, even differently, have two floors. Have a floor, production floor, for all the raw materials underneath, and that's where the refineries would come in as an as a mild uh, annoyance because they are very tall as well. So if I put down a refinery, you can see that I would have to have. Uh, well, I'm, I don't have any motors, but with the uh, chimney, uh, that's called chimney. But you get the point. Um, that would be like eight or ten foundations high. So that that would be a lot. But I could have a dedicated part of the factory, uh, or of each of these factories, for refineries. It's much easier to bring in things via a pipe, uh, using a couple of pumps every here and there, where it's necessary. And then I could just belt the things directly from that over to this. And then I have these six machines making insulated crystal oscillators. And then maybe I need computers. So instead of making a, a whole bunch of circuit boards, this is going by the 27.5 of, of each of these. So I'm belting in 780 of each of those with one machine underclocked so that it actually adds up to 780. I have to keep, in my spreadsheet, I have to keep track of uh, how many circuit boards I'm using for the computers and other things. And then I take those things over here to make the Caterium computers. And again, that is uh, limited by how much quick wire can I transport on one belt. So, what I want to do differently is to have little manufacturing uh, hubs uh, for each different product. Um, one of them being may being being very uh, specifically aimed for the mall. And so every time I build one of these uh, new uh, style segments of the factory, I would just have, like, for instance, for computers, for the mall, I would have two machines. Probably. I'm not sure. Probably two machines. And those computers would be going into a container. And then I would actually set overflow to go to a, an awesome sink. So that things doesn't stand still on the belts. It would also challenge me on building larger power networks because because of everything is standing still. I have a production capacity of 21. Th this is varying because of the pipe thing out at the turbo fuel um, fuel generators. But the maximum consumption here is 33.889.1 megawatts. I obviously wouldn't be doing a maximum consumption even with the setup that I'm suggesting because I wouldn't be using sinks everywhere. I would just be using the sinks on uh, the end of the line, which means where the uh, stuff that either goes to the mall, uh, or rather the stuff that goes to the mall, however I build the mall, I have some ideas there. That probably aren't that original because I've seen other ideas uh, from other streamers that I enjoy um, and I would like to make something similar my own take but we'll leave that as a surprise for when that comes so these for instance would be sending stuff to the mall as an example and the overflow would be a smart splitter sending the overflow out to an awesome sink in the basic production area. The stuff that I would be belting would be things like uh, ingots. It doesn't make sense to to uh, have smelters for each specific thing because I would have to belt the ore anyways. So what I would do, and I like that idea, I hope it's uh, something that is actually possible to do, but what I would do is at each 
outpost because we are going to use trains now that the hover pack has arrived it is much much more fun to build trains so instead of Melting the ore like this all the way into underneath and then over to the smelting facilities that I have underneath over there. I'd have the smelters locally or I'd have a, a smelting facility here for instance because the dune desert is a very good location for, for uh, nodes. There's a lot of pure nodes out here. And then I'd have a train station with many platforms, not just one, many platforms so that I could send stuff out to where it's needed because with trains you can get uh, a very decent uh, throughput. For some products I would be using drones. Quickwire for instance is a good example of that because Quickwire stacks in 500s. Uh, batteries would be the challenge there but that is a challenge that I'm very willing to uh, to tackle uh, because uh, that, that would be far easier than what I'm doing now. For me I should add. Uh, part of this also has to do with time constraints. Now, another reason, and this is also in line with the pedantic building style that I have, but it is an important reason for me. Another reason would be, uh, let's have a power line going from here to there. If you look down there, and you look over there, what I was going to do with this base was that I needed to make steamed copper sheets. And that meant that I would have to add 35 refineries somewhere down here. And then I realized that those foundations down there, they are not aligned with the foundations in the base. And I'm not even sure if those foundations out there are aligned with the foundations in the base. And... I'd rather have them be aligned because I don't mind foundations being off-grid when they're far away from the main base, but when they're this close to the main base it kind of looks wrong. So in spirit with how I like to build, it's not an obsessive thing, but I just like having it uniform. Uh, so I would have to do some major shenanigans, rebuild these things. I was going to rebuild these anyways because I was going to bring in water and use refineries to have the uh, wet concrete recipe instead of wasting a lot of limestone down there on constructors when you can get so much more concrete from the uh, refinery recipe. But then there's the other thing, the dune desert. The dune desert itself is less than ideal to build in. The main reason for that is all of these weird rock uh, formations that are all, all around the place. Uh, I've had to build a base around them, like the scorpion stinger that I have down there. Uh, have a hole in the floor. The ones that are in there, they kind of disrupt the, the base flow. Uh, so I would rather be in the rocky desert, with, which is my favorite area in the game to build in. Uh, another thing with the Dune Desert, of course, uh, which cannot be ignored, is the um, the, uh, the dunes themselves. You have to build fairly high above the terrain to avoid what happened down there to happen. I can't easily expand that smelting array down there. There isn't enough room to build more in there. Uh, and there certainly isn't enough room to build more out there either. So I would have to build far, farther farther up, which would not be ideal. So the Dune Desert itself, with all the belts crisscrossing the desert to the various stations that I have, that is smelting, the smelting array down there being a good example of what I mean. The belts coming in from the outposts, because I felt that the distance was too low to actually bother with using trains in here. To a certain extent, that would probably also still apply to a new base, but because trains take up a lot of space, it wouldn't make sense to have a train station. Uh, well, maybe it would. Maybe it would have a train station over there bringing the steel into a train station underneath all of this instead of having these belts uh, 
going across the landscape like that. Same with over there. Maybe have a train station there and bring it in by a train station and unload it and then go back. I mean, it, don't, it doesn't have to be connected to the main train network. It could be a very simple one platform train station or two platform train station over there and a same here. And I could just have a train in um, like a locomotive on each side of the train. So it just went back and forth without having to do any turns. That is an option as well. But as a Malarian, uh, one of my uh, good friends and uh, moderators uh, mentioned Satisfactory and most of these production games, I dare say all of them, uh, because he made a very good point. These games are iterative. You, you build something large, like I've done here, you learn from it, and then you suddenly get this desire to, ah, why didn't I do it like this instead? And that's probably going to happen again. Uh, I mean, this probably won't be the last time I restart. And of course, when update 1.0 comes out, then we'll have another one there. So it is iterative. That's a very good point. And I've come to uh, a head of where I feel that this factory has served me very well in learning a lot of, a lot of things. And those things are things that I want to expand upon in a new base, while also giving that long play episodic thing with long episodes that people can watch and see everything I do. I might do some things off camera, but as little as possible. Uh, planning things would be off camera if, if I find some idea that would be outside of my regular streaming hours and I want to follow up on that idea, then I might poke in and, and do some preliminary planning and stuff like that, but most of the building, 98% plus of the building should happen on camera so that people actually get to see what I am doing. Now, I am not the best satisfactory out there. Uh, I consider myself fairly skilled at the game. I have probably around 2000 hours maybe even more in the game now. I calculated that since Epic uh, added that feature where you can see how many hours you've played, I'm around 1500, but I did play the game a fair, fair amount of time before they added that as well, so maybe even 2500 hours in the game. And I'm still loving the game. Uh, it's probably one of the, uh, the uh, games I've played the most outside of uh, MMO games, as a matter of fact. Uh, so, but even though I might not be the best player out there, uh, I still feel that I can entertain you guys and maybe even learn you guys a couple of things every now and then at least, uh, and I enjoy that very much. And I love the interactions, I love the comments, I love the chat when I'm streaming, uh, you guys should be prepared for the episode number one of uh, of the new series. That 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 was uh, that was very intense in terms of me being broken all the time because uh, we had a visit in in chat and uh, I I I laughed so much. So it, that was really fun, um, and it's it's just a part of being content creator that is just simply amazing. I have many, many ideas for what I want to do differently in the new base, and uh, I could talk about them, but let's just leave it at, as I've had it now, or what I've said now, and uh, you guys will, will see how I do it, whether you follow the long series or you follow my, my shorter updates on how the factory has progressed. That is up to you. I leave that all up to you. Do what you feel is most fun, or even don't watch at all if you don't want to, of course, obviously. I would also like to uh, to give a, a very special thank you to all of you for being here with me on this amazing journey of me building up a channel here. Uh, for those of you who are following me on Twitch as well, thank you so much, and uh, I've I recently crossed 4,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is, I mean, 
It's not a large YouTube channel by any measure, but to me, 4,000 is a lot of people. And, and I feel honored and very grateful that so many people want to participate in my journey, watch what I do, and uh, interact with comments and suggestions, questions. I, it's, it's given me so much in my life that I can do what I love, which is playing games, and I can do it together with people in this manner. It's just amazing to me. Since I'm unable to work due to my mental health, this has become my job now. Uh, I'm spending a lot of hours recording, streaming, and it is, it is my job. And I'm actually... It's slightly mystifying or weird to be able to say that yeah, I, I work as a streamer, YouTuber, full-time. That's... That's not something that I ever thought that I would be saying to anyone. But here we are. I would of course also like to offer a special thank you to all of those of you who are supporting me with uh, uh, monetary support, uh, like Patreon, tips, subscrip subscriptions over at Twitch. Uh, it is very much appreciated. I am in the fortunate situation where I do not rely upon that money. So if you have ever considered supporting the channel with money, but you're in a situation where you don't feel that it might be good for your economic situation, then please take care of yourself first and foremost. And that also goes to those of you who are active patrons. Please take care of yourself first. Um, I, I'm living a comfortable life as is. I'm doing this for fun and that will always be my primary focus regardless of, of the, uh, the monetary aspect of it. But that said, the, the monetary support has been helpful like a lot because it has enabled me to get better gear. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm completely spoiled with this computer with a, a Ryzen 9 5900X and a, a, a GeForce RTX 3080. I, I wouldn't have been able to afford those parts if it weren't for the support that I've been uh, getting from those of you who have had the opportunity to support me monetarily. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for for that. That also, of course, ups the quality of my uh, content because there's less lag, there's less... I mean, it's it's very... This is in a heavy, heavy, heavy uh, activity. There's lots of belts, there's lots of stuff going on here, and still, it's very smooth. And I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to do that. But, as I mentioned, and I want to reiterate that, never feel that you should support the channel. I am just very grateful that you even bother watching the content. That is the most important part to me. So to all of you, whether you are a viewer who never comments, whether you are a viewer who do comment, whether you are a Patreon, thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you very, very much. And I am very grateful that you are a part of my journey. So with those things off my heart and uh, a little explanation of why uh, I am ending this series, I hope that you will enjoy the, uh, the next series uh, together with me. I also hope that you've enjoyed this uh, factory. I hope that I have been able to, uh, to teach you or give you ideas, inspiration for creativity for your own factories or maybe even you don't have satisfaction and you just enjoy watching the game. Uh, I hope that that I can continue to provide that kind of entertainment uh, for all of you. So questions and comments as per usual fe feel free to leave those in the comment section and also remember that uh, you can join the Discord community server which you will find the link to in the description below and 
thank you so much for joining me in this final episode of this specific factory. I will see you all in the next factory. <laughs>